Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to study D-Latch and implement it in static CMOS, Zero NMOS, Dynamic and C-Square MOS style logic. Okay, let's get started. Here if you see that I have put a lot of diagrams on the screen, don't get intimidated by it at all. It's a very straightforward thing. If you look at it properly, you would see that we had a race problem or a race condition in my SR latch either when both my inputs were zero or when my both my inputs were one depending on the NOR based implementation or the NAND based implementation and race condition was a condition which was not allowed. Hence to avoid that condition what we do is we use a D-latch or a delayed latch where this is nothing but my SR latch which we have already seen in the previous clip and I am shorting both its inputs which was previously S and R I'm shorting both these inputs and connecting an inverter in between. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to ensure that my S and R both will not have the same value which was leading to race condition in an SR latch. So it's a very straightforward phenomena now. So this is what my D latch gate level diagram looks like. We have already seen that there are four NANDs in an SR latch. This is a block diagram for NAND and this is the static CMOS style implementation of NAND. We have already seen quite a lot of this in the previous clips. And again, this is my truth table. Again, we are using an enable signal here. So when enable is low, it does not care what my D input is, but same like SR latch, it will hold on to my previous value. However, when enable is one, there will be an effect of input D and the output will change. We have already studied this in the lower classes. You can put this different values of D in the gate level diagram and also see the corresponding output. When you do that, you will come to know that when D is zero, my output Q is zero. When my D is one, my output Q is one. So my output follows the input with some delay, which is nothing but a delay of all the gates which are present. And so it's called a delayed latch. Now we need to implement this delayed latch in a static CMOS style very similar to SR, just short SNR with an inverter in between is nothing but a D-latch implementation in static style. If I have to do it real quick, we'll name all these NANDs, say 1, 2, 3 and 4 and draw the corresponding NAND diagrams for 1, 2, 3 and 4. Suppose for NAND 1 the inputs are D and E, so this is input D and this is input E. DE and the output is S bar is taken here and given to NAND3 as one of the inputs. So draw all the four NANDs, give it the corresponding inputs, take the outputs and that outputs can be the inputs to certain NANDs, make those connections, ensure that now there will be an inverter. This inverter is nothing but the inverter present between the two inputs. So that's the inverter present and this inverter is also being shown. So one NAND2 will have an input D bar whereas NAND1 will have an input D and this completes my static CMOS style representation of a D latch. To convert this to zero and MOS style, we already know by now, we have to just replace the pull up by a PMOS transistor which is always on. In dynamic style, we'll have a pull up circuit replaced by a PMOS transistor and the pull down of a static style, we will append an NMOS and both this PMOS and NMOS will have an input phi. And in C square MOS style, we'll have the pull up, we'll have the pull down, and in between my pull up and pull down, appending a series transistor to a pull up, connecting closer to the output, and appending an NMOS transistor to the pull down of static closer to the output, which is nothing but pull up, appending a series PMOS, pull down, appending a series NMOS to it, and the output will be taken from here. This will be nothing but my C square MOS logic style implementation. Let's quickly see all these diagrams as on the previous slide for the static style. Just replace the pull up with a PMOS which is always on. That means its input is grounded. So this is nothing but a D latch in pseudo and MOS style. This is nothing but a D latch in dynamic style. Now by now you should know that it's a very straightforward thing. It's not difficult at all. Though the diagrams look big, they are very straightforward to implement. So in D-latch and dynamic circuit, we'll have a pull-up PMOS and a pull-down NMOS, pull-up PMOS, pull-down NMOS, so on and so forth, connected with an input phi and the inverter which is connected is also implemented in dynamic style and the outputs are taken between the pull-up and the pull-down network. 
So this is nothing but a D latch in the dynamic style. Same like static, only a pull up is replaced by a P MOS with an input phi and pull down is replaced by an N MOS in series with a static style pull down. And this becomes my dynamic style D latch. Finally, let's see the C square MOS style D latch as discussed. Pull up and pull down remains the same like static style. And in between you will have a P MOS and an N MOS. And the output is taken in between from that PMOS and NMOS which are connected or appended in series to my pull up and pull down network respectively. So once the outputs are taken, you just need to take that outputs and make the further connections. So this is a very straightforward thing. So with this, we saw how DLATCH can be implemented in static, dynamic, zero NMOS and C square MOS style. In further clips, you will see a D flip flop and implementation of DLATCH in pass transistor and transmission gate style. Hope you have followed. Stay tuned and thank you very much.